In this film, we will provide for our viewers the top three so-called best evidences that scientists offer for teaching evolution as fact in our government schools. We get our information from an article published by the American Institute of Biological Sciences. The author of the article was Dr. Richard E. Linsky, Ph.D. He has written more than 100 articles on evolution. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Academy of Microbiology, and the MacArthur Foundation at Michigan State University. He is the Hanna Professor of Microbial Ecology as well. Certainly, he would be considered to be a leading authority of evolution sciences. The title of his article is Evidence for Evolution and Its Significance in Our Lives. Dr. Linsky says, The following offers a sample of the kinds of evidence that have been discovered and confirmed repeatedly by scientists. Remember that this is the same lingo and jargon, discovered and confirmed repeatedly, used by scientists to convince us that man-made global warming was a scientific fact as well, now indisputably proven to be the largest hoax perpetrated upon the world in the last couple of years. Here are Dr. Linsky's top three evidences which have been discovered and confirmed repeatedly by scientists, his top three evidences for evolution. Number one, evidence from the fossils. Quote, based on myriad similarities and differences between living species, evolutionary biology makes predictions about the features of ancestral forms. For example, numerous features indicate that birds are derived from reptilian ancestors. The fossils indicate nothing of the kind, unless, of course, that is what you want the fossils to indicate. Dr. Richard Dawkins unintentionally admits this very thing in his book that has become the Bible among his followers. The book is called The Ancestor's Tale, in which he basically says, here are all the fossils we have. Can't you see that they tell the story of evolution? All of the fossils taken together tell the story of evolution. Yes, taking them all together, you can arrange and tell any story you wish, Mr. Evolutionist. But nothing about the fossil evidence indicates or proves or provides solid evidence for one kind of living thing ever becoming another kind of living thing, like a bird deriving from a reptile. It just does not, no matter how loud you scream it. His next statement is rather telling concerning this fairy tale construction from the fossil evidence. Dr. Linsky says, Fossils are especially important evidence for evolution because with little effort each of us can use our eyes and minds to observe and interpret the ancient fossils in public museums. Yes, we use our eyes. We see the fossils. We see the similarities between a chimp and an ape and a man. And, and then we use our minds with little effort, he says, to interpret. Well then, since they look so similar, one must have come from the other. But that is a guessing game. That assumes that there is no creator or intelligent designer. And that is not science. It is speculative guessing based upon a prejudiced assumption. And this is the number one evidence Dr. Linsky offers. Number two, evidence from genetics. Quote, the genomes of all living organisms contain overwhelming evidence for evolution. All living species share the same basic mechanism of heredity using DNA or RNA in some viruses to encode genes that are passed from parent to offspring and which are transcribed and translated into proteins during each organism's life. Using DNA sequences, biologists quantify the genetic similarities and differences among species in order to determine which species are more closely related to one another and which are more distantly related. This is getting old, but here it goes again. The similarities in the genomes of all living things is not overwhelming evidence that we all came from common ancestors. That would be a logical speculation, but it could also just as logically indicate that we have a common creator using common building blocks. That would be just as scientific of an observation. If one sees a computer monitor and a television for the very first time, for example, one could assume that one of those randomly evolved from the other one since there's so much obvious similarity in the basic building blocks of the two objects. But you see, we know the truth. The truth is they both came from a common creator using many of the same and basic building blocks. But the computer monitor did not randomly emerge from the television or vice versa. And then number three, evolution in action. Quote, evolutionary change continues to this day. 
and it will proceed so long as life itself exists. Yes, Dr. Linsky, microevolution does exist. It has never been disputed by creationists because it is completely scientific. There are many species, varieties, and changes within dogs and horses and even humans, for example. But even within these evolutionary changes within species and within populations, there are always limits to how far the changes can be pushed, and no one has ever observed one population becoming another population. And that is the teaching of evolution to which creationists object. It is taught in origins classes and in every evolution textbook. It is not scientific. It is not science. Here is Dr. Linsky's concluding statement. Quote, Evolutionary biology is a strong and vigorous field of science. Hence, evolution is both a theory and a set of established facts that the theory explains. There exists no other scientific explanation that can account for all the patterns in nature only non-scientific explanations that require a miraculous force like a creator. Aha, and there it is again. This is what the whole thing is about. Just as Dr. Richard Dawkins admits that evolution is the gateway to atheistic belief, Dr. Linsky now admits in this article, in his conclusion, that God is absolutely non-necessary, non-scientific, and irrelevant. But the dishonesty of that statement, that there exists no other scientific explanation for the existence of life on earth, is simply disingenuous and absolutely dishonest, and not even a scientific statement in and of itself. Listen to the very last words of his article. Science provides us with a compelling account and explanation of the changing life on earth. It should also remind us of our good fortune to have come into being and our great responsibility to ensure the continuity of life. So we are here by dumb luck and good fortune. And according to Dr. Linsky, we have a great responsibility to keep that dumb luck going. Gee, an evolutionist wonder why the vast majority of the world's population laughs at their so-called science. And don't forget, this is the best that evolution can offer. It's from the American Institute of Biological Sciences and one of their shining stars, Dr. Linsky. <laughs>